Nick. Hopefully you can hear me okay, yes? I'm usually at home behind a computer, so this is a whole new ball game for me. So, <laughs> um, so as Nick said, yes, I am a virtual assistant. So I started uh, my business three years ago, uh, built my own WordPress website. Uh, that was a learning curve and a half, I will say. Um, and since then, uh, because my clients are all either solo, micro or small businesses, they're all using WordPress too. So uh, a lot of the time I find I'm supporting them in using WordPress uh, in the back end of things too. Uh, so last year was my first year at WordCamp and uh, as everyone has mentioned, the community is amazing and so I thought this year when the speaker opportunities came up, let's uh, shake things up a bit and get in front of the room myself. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming at it from the angle of I'm, I'm supporting people using, uh, uh, using WordPress and being in the, back, in the back end of businesses, I see how WordPress changes how they do their day to day and how a, a website change can and all the plugins and, and all the extra things can change how you do your day to day. Hopefully the clicker will work. I'll go manual. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm a virtual assistant. Yes, I am real. Yes, I am a person standing in front of you. Uh, I provide admin support uh, remotely. I've got clients all around Australia uh, and one who's based in Hong Kong, which is rather exciting. Uh, all in varied industries, all... Uh, I've got a mixture of journalists, uh, an engineering consultancy, um, so I'm kind of a, a Jill of all trades, you could say, um, but my my, my true zone of genius is uh, techie and systems. So hence why I love WordPress and I also specialize in uh, G Suite. So um, I guess that's that, uh, the, the techie brain uh, happening there. Um, so w with my work as a VA, I, I love finding efficiencies and how they are, are doing their day to day. A lot of my clients come to me when they're just running and running and running. Um, and I like to sit down with them and, and map out, okay, what are you actually doing and how can I help or how can someone else help? Because virtual assistants vary in their skill sets. Um, like I said, I'm a techie person, but there are other VAs who do the, more the day to day, um, checking emails, client liaison, um, uh, phone reception, there is, is one of my colleagues, she's completely phone reception, um, phone services. So um, yeah, I've been each of the, the uh, each of the things listed above um, at, some, at some stage uh, in my business. So yeah, I've got a, a varied uh, range of clients. So it's, it's challenging and there's a lot of different hats to wear. So today, here's what I want to run through. Uh, the, four, the four zones of power in your uh, business processes, and this is where I, I see it consistently when I, I start with a new client. So this is sort of my, my plan of attack when I start with a new client, and I see how that translates into how you're using WordPress. How to use WordPress to strengthen your business admin, and I'm talking more about the strategy because I'm not, I'm not an expert in, in WordPress and the plugins, like the, the, um, the speaker before me, I picked up a few plugins there where I'm like, yes, I am, I am running with that. Um, like I got excited last month when I figured out how to add coupons to Woo WooCommerce. Like, it's the little things, it's the little things. Um, how to link your systems to processes to make your businesses run smoothly. smoothly. So I'm very, very, process and systems driven. Um, again, it's an admin trait. Um, and the essential WordPress challenges clients are outsourcing to a virtual assistant. Um, like I said, 
um, VAs are very varied, and I only do a small uh, part of some WordPress um, systems, so um, I'll cover that later. So the whole inspiration for my talk today, um, my, one of my very wonderful clients, who I love dearly, uh, decided to move from another platform that I won't speak of the name here today, um, decided, that's it, I want to go WordPress, I want to up the ante, I want to have this, 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 and this in place. So I gave her a list of developers that I uh, have seen the work of or recommend. She went completely in the opposite direction, <laughs> completely fine. Um, but, and the outcome was a fantastic looking website, but in the back threw up a whole new world of challenges for me as an admin person helping them um, to get around and get things flowing smoothly for them. Because up until that point, she was a one person show. Um, there was no support, she was doing everything herself, a lot of it through social media, so adding a complexity of a new website that does all these extra things, then added to her, her plate of what can she do herself or what does she need to outsource. So um, yeah, that, that has thrown up a few challenges in the last few months, but we're ironing out the, uh, the creases and things are running out so much more smoothly, which is what you want um, with WordPress, to doing it in, the, in a, a structured way. That's what you want to happen. So this is probably the whole meat of what I'm going to discuss today. Um, when I start with a new client, and actually this is the, the areas I look at, I also do audits for um, clients who aren't ready for a full full blown VA, but they just want to, you know, figure out what's going on and, and where they can streamline things. Um, so the four key areas I look at, and I see this across product and service based businesses: your operations, your marketing, your sales, and your delivery. And how you're doing your admin for each of those areas. Like some do cross over, um, you know, one system working in one section can filter across to multiple areas. Um, but looking at that and seeing, okay, how can I structure how I'm doing this and, and what tools am I using and what does that mean? Like, it may not be automated. Um, it may still be very manual. But thinking of how you do that step by step, day to day, um, and then adding in the pieces that will make it run a lot more smoothly. So operations. It, it's kind of a little bit wide, yes, um, but I think of it more as day to day, uh, looking after your financials, doing your day to day tasks, talking to your customers. Um, for, for my client, this dramatically changed because they were previously doing a lot on social media and that was it because their WordPress web store, their, their website was just a static piece of the puzzle. But when we had the new website up, a lot of her social media was driving people to her website, signing up for online courses, signing up on the, you know, contact me via the contact form. Um, higher rate of blogging, um, all the call to your actions changed in to move towards the WordPress website. And so this changed the whole way of whether I was monitoring the inbox or she was looking after it or, um, you know, new inquiries coming through that she didn't realise were coming through a different way. So um, this created a whole new gamut of challenges for us because then we had to sit down and go, okay, so who's doing what, where and when? Um, sorry, I'm referring to my notes. <laughs> um, so it's just keeping it, it all cons consistent and sort of looking at, okay, well, with financials, you know, if you have an e-commerce platform, is it feeding into your, um, into your accounting software? If not, can it? Um, just, to, just to take out those extra steps along the way. So the next area was marketing, and I, I touched on this before. Um, the change of 
how she was doing her marketing then drove people to her website and how would that look. Um, with the blogging, as I said, the blogging then changed. Like Previously, she'd just throw it up and that was it. But then came the change of, oh, there's SEO to think of and how does that look and what images do I need to add up to make it look good? And all of a sudden, she went, oh, that's too hard. So that then got handballed to me and we had a timetable of, okay, I'll be doing the copy this day but it has to be ready to go by this day. Um, Podcast. She added a podcast to the mix, which wasn't there before. Um, so then we have a, now have a, a podcasting page on the website. That also ties into with call to actions of, okay, do you like the podcast? Sign up for my free e-course here and all, all that sort of thing. So there was extra levels that the, the website were now handling that then we had to think about, all right, now I have to step in or she has to think about how we approach each of those areas. Um, also, the landing pages, actually, and I did this for her this week. Um, because the website now has the e-commerce side with her subscription base and her course and now this week a retreat, I then had to be creating landing pages for her because she didn't know how, for starters, and also the way the developers built the website, um, it's a lot of hard coding in there and things like that. So for her to even attempt it, yeah, she, she just went too hard. <laughs> um, so with my knowledge of WordPress, I was able to go in there and help her get that up and running, and um, we're now half booked already this week. So, uh, But then with that being now applicable, She's booked it out, <laughs> like had those extra places there where before it was, a hell, it was a lot of manual calling or emails and things backwards and forwards, whereas we've just put the landing page up and it's going and it's done. And, um, and actually each time someone signs up, we've got an automation running where it populates a Google sheet for her to go, okay, that person's come through, right, where are they up to in, in the process of what we need to do? So the third area is sales, and I sort of touched on this with the Google Sheet. Um, having, having, system, having plugins and things happening with your website, like for me personally, I have, um, I recently added WooCommerce and I'm going to be building um, some more templates because I, I specialise in G Suite and a lot of people ask me for my templates. And so I've had to add that level into my um, website where that, I'm able to sell my templates and they're able to go and download them and that, and that side of things. So that's now changed for me in, okay, that happens, but then what are the steps then from that? Do I automate it so then they're able to, like that gets populated elsewhere for me to manage who's buying what and when or for my client. Um, with the membership portal that's now on her website, she gets the new um, sign-ups, but it's not automated in setting them up as users. So then it was turned to, okay, am I setting up the users? Is she setting up the users? Or, and how is that looking? Who, what do the usernames set, look like? What are the set passwords? How is that then getting communicated to the customer that's now, um, that's now signed up? And it's all steps that hadn't even entered her mind at the time of getting this website done that it would change how she's doing things. Um, also, with forms on the website, she's also got now an onboarding process because before it was just all in, in here, in her head, um, being done manually. But now that she has me and also another team member looking at this, she's now got a Google form that we now use and embed into the welcome emails and all that sort of thing um, that's off the back of the changes that we've made on the, with the website because it's completely changed how her whole business is running. And I'm just realising I'm charging through. So hopefully I'm not exploding any brains or going too quickly. <laughs> and then the fourth piece is the delivery. And as I mentioned, uh, with my particular client, a lot of, was, a lot of it was done on social media. Um, 
And that's now changed because she's now got this evergreen platform with a membership site that she's been able to upload all her videos, all her content, then sell that as the packaged product. And so she's been able to step out of having to do that live all the time in social media and the ways that she was doing it. And so that has meant the delivery models changed for her product there. Um, also the delivery of, uh, she has a subscription service for an, um, SMS messages, which wasn't even in the realm of um, comprehension at the time. Actually, it's another one of her lovely brainchilds that we had a moment of, okay, how is that going to happen? Um, and so we had to map out what that looked like. Okay, they went to the website, put in their details, then what would happen for that to get into the, the platform that it needs to, to be doing that side of things. But then on top of that, where else does those contact details go? And who, like, who's troubleshooting when things don't go to plan? And so it's, it's thinking about the processes in the back that, uh, yes, some of it's automated, but then you also have to try and catch what's not automated. And that's, you know, a lot of that falls down to the admin person that's helping them or to the person that um, is looking at the inbox and going, oh, where's all this going? And having that structured, all right, we need to catch this now and what's the next step from here? Um, and also some people, or some have, you know, you your downloadables are all hosted on your, work, on your website. What does that mean? So how is that getting from, um, from sign up to the customer? So just thinking about how, how your web, whether your WordPress website can help you um, deliver what you're, you're selling to your customers. Side note, I totally sit in a forest on a tree stump thinking like this when I'm thinking of, of admin processes. Actually, yeah, no, I don't. It's, actually, I don't know of anywhere around here that's quite as lush and green. Because um, you totally do that sit in nature when you're thinking of technology. Um, so how to use WordPress to strengthen your business admin. And I kind of have touched this all the way on this all the way through is, Thinking about how are you doing things right now and then looking at it of, okay, there's these really cool plugins around which we saw in, in the um, session before. How can I apply that into my business to take out those extra little steps along the way? Um, so just thinking of how do you do your current processes? What are in place? Because a lot of things do talk um, to each other if you dig deeper or find the little, the fun little tools that connect things along the way. Um, how does your tie, website tie into this? Because websites used to be a static thing, but now they're not. So um, is your website doing a lot more than just being a placeholder uh, for, your, uh, for your business? Um, and like I said, where can you create those links? Something might go there directly. Um, I know a few things you can just integrate straight away, um, but some might take an extra few steps. Um, and is there an opportunity to automate? Um, and and I, I've said this here, do not try to automate everything. <laughs> um, there, it, it's all well and good to try and, yep, I'm gonna completely let go of all this stuff, um, but sometimes just keeping your fingers in, in, in touch points is handy to have. Um, just pick a, a couple of key things at the start because I, I speak to um, people that I do the audits for and they're like, yeah, I just want hands off. And they try and do it and it's just overwhelmed because there's so many pieces of the moving pieces of the puzzle that if one thing fails here, then what does that mean for the rest down the track? So, um, and so that gives you the chance to continuously tweak and improve what you're doing. Okay, so I touched on it before. Uh, there's a couple of VAs in the room, which is slightly terrifying, so I apologize if I throw you in it. Um, 
V different VAs do different things. I'm a techie and systems person. I work very closely with a, a VA in Sydney who loves calendar management and emails and the day-to-day -day stuff. You couldn't get me out of there fast enough. Um, but a lot of people need that, <laughs> me included. Um, I, I systemize and automate that side of things because my brain um, likes to run in little uh, simple flows. But um, when I said I was speaking at WordCamp, I threw it out to my colleagues in Virtually Yours, which is an Australian-based uh, network for virtual assistants. Um, because I only do a small, very small amount of um, WordPress support work for my clients. But I threw it out there and said, look, what are the type of things you guys are helping your clients with in WordPress? Because there's going to be a room for, full of people who are using WordPress but might just want some extra help. And so they come back to me with a, a very healthy list of things that they're helping their clients with. And it's sometimes it's ad hoc, sometimes it's a, it's a set thing. Um, but it's also interesting to note that VAs are working in the back of WordPress and are able to help with some of the things that you might find challenging. Um, so editing pages, using themes, various themes. Um, I know a favorite um, amongst a few people I know uh, is Divi, and I've pre recently just bought it myself to learn it. Um, but I've also, like I've got a client who uses Elementor, so, um, yeah, I'm using various themes that different clients are using. Um, updating the content, and this that's usually a really big one because they just go, oh, look at the back end of WordPress and go, yeah, no, nah, not, not doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, doing the blogs, copy, images, videos, podcast episodes. Lyndall Harris is in the room. Um, <laughs> podcast VA. Um, so that's, that's really her zone of genius. Um, researching plugins. Um, I, actually, I haven't done that myself. That was actually another suggestion from someone. Um, and a lot of the time, their clients are going, oh, I want, the, I want it to do this. So they um, send our VAs on the, um, some their VAs on the loose to find plugins to do that for them. Um, running the updates and backups. Uh, custom coding, there's some VAs in the group that wholly specialise in, in WordPress websites, which is very cool, um, basic, basic stuff. Uh, and troubleshooting, I've had a couple of times with my client where things just stopped working, so another learning curve. Um, so monitoring the comments and responses on pages and posts, I had actually had this with my client. Uh, it all used to do it when she was on the old website and then all of a sudden she was getting just email after email after email about the, uh, the comments and she went, what's going on? I, I don't understand. So um, yeah, I think I went in there at about 200 comments after she finally told me what was going on. Um, so that was fun. Uh, basic SEO, SEO keywords, uh, analytics reporting, so a lot of the time they, they just want to know what's going on. Um, but don't want to pull the reports or figure out what's going on. Um, embedding of the forms in from other systems. Um, managing the e-commerce listing, so the product-based businesses. And this last one, flagging upcoming WordPress events for clients. That is genuinely a response I had from someone. So they're stalking the, uh, the dashboard of WordPress and flagging the events for their clients. Um, So yeah, as I said, I only do a small amount of what I um, went through there, but yeah, there are VAs out there that are also working in, in WordPress and are trying to find ways that using WordPress can help streamline the, the admins for their clients. Um, because admin takes up so much time, then why not use a tool that you're already using to, to streamline what you're doing day to day? So that is my details. Um, yeah, uh, hope that had some helpful insights for you. Um, yeah, using a, a virtual assistant isn't scary. We are humans. We are <laughs> we are in the in the trenches. So um, yeah, if you have any questions or yeah, want some feedback on that, just uh, yeah, that's where you can find me.
So any questions for Corin? Actually, what we'll do with the questions, if, um, if you could actually come down with your question, uh, and then it makes it a bit easier for us, and then we can actually get you on camera as well. <laughs> you mentioned that you are feeding information from WordPress into a Google Sheet. Yep. How are you doing that? Uh, usually, well, this particular client has, a WooCommerce, has WooCommerce, and so using Zapier. So that just that bridge between WooCommerce through to Google um, Google Sheet, it, and that's the thing. Little things like that really are simple, uh, and it, it, it just takes out that legwork in between. And that's yeah. And then I can be a lot of time that that connection just is enough for my clients to go, yep, we're all over it. So sort of takes out that time from me spending doing it manually for them to them being up confident with, yep, that's just going straight there to their happy days. So, yeah. Nope. Any more questions? One down the front here. <laughs> Hi, and thanks. I'm just wondering, does that actually work with other um, things like databases other than Google Sheet as well? Uh, I actually couldn't tell you. To, uh, yeah, sorry. I, like a lot of the time when I my clients go, oh, I, I want to do this particular thing, I go off and research it and find what the best solution is based on what they're doing. Um, Yay for Google um, and YouTube. Um, I guess that's probably part and parcel of being a VA is just being able to yeah, hunt down the solution. So um, yeah, Zapier is my favourite thing for a lot of those connecting bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what's yeah what they're using and and what's possible. Yeah. Yep. Hi. 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 How do you charge for jobs as a virtual assistant? Do you charge like a, Good question. a monthly fee <laughs> or is it And that's something I should have covered. Um, I personally, I'm a per hour um, VA, but a lot, there's other VAs that either do blocks of hours, so they do say five, ten hours in a month, or, or others do package rates based on what the deliverables are. It really does depend on the VA and the kind of support they're doing. Um, and yeah, my, the network I'm a member of, uh, Virtually Yours, it's kind of starts from $30 and upwards, depending on their skill sets and, and what, yeah, what exactly you're looking for, because um, it is so varied. Cool. Uh, <coughs> you uh, mentioned that you do G Suite templates. Oh, sorry, whereabouts am I? Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> you mentioned you do G Suite templates. What's that about? Um, well, I am. G, I've got my certifications with G Suite. So, uh, one of my most favourite things is being cheap. <laughs> um, like there's CRMs out there that are fantastic, and but um, a lot of the time my clients they have G Suite, but don't want to pay extra subscriptions for all those CRMs out there. So I've actually built quite a few CRM type spread Google Sheets. Um, that they use just to track inquiries and things like that it's because they don't, either A, they, they can't get their head around full-blown systems, or B, they just want somewhere to easily update themselves and see what's going on with particular clients. So, um, and I've also like built social media planning templates and things like that that my clients just find just easy to use, easier to use in a, a full-blown system. So, yeah, I've had, quite a few requests to get the templates happening. So um, that way they just can do it without having to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned you use Zapier for a lot of your integrations. Yep. Um, how do you approach um, handling like privacy of data information when you're going cross-platform and if you use like um, third party or, or various um, connection points? Um, to be honest, a lot of the time I, I give the, the advice to my client and 
they go with what they want, feel is right. Because sometimes they even go, yeah, I don't, I'm not comfortable with that happening. So then we go back to a manual option. So it really does depend on my client and what they want to do and what they want to achieve. So yeah, I don't go in there going, yeah, go across all multiple places just because um, it's something they have to be comfortable with and okay with in terms of the privacy stuff and things like that. So yeah, a lot of the time they're like, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, if, if they don't want to do it, we don't. So it's really dependent on them. I'd love the idea of having a, a virtual assistant to handle all my admin, but I'm a massive control freak. Oh, yeah. I and I'm terrified of the idea of letting someone yep. do yep. that stuff. Yep. How do we actually task someone like you? Because half the time I feel like if I would take the time to describe what I need done, yep. it's kind of already done anyway. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> how do I keep that private and secure? Yeah. Um, I, like a lot of my clients are like that and they're like, I don't want to let go. Um, or yeah, I don't like the idea of letting someone into everything. So usually it starts with one thing and then once they get that, that, um, that trust, they go, okay, well then can you do this as well? Um, virtually yours, the, the network I'm a member of, Rosie, um, has a lot of resources for, for people who want to outsource. Um, so I'm... Yeah, I'm a VA, <laughs> I'm the doing the do, but a lot of her resources run through a lot of that and give you ideas on how you can think about where to start or, or where do you, what do you want to get help with. So yeah, I could recommend having a look at some of the stuff on her website. Oh. Oh, is there one more, is there? Yeah. One more. Thank you. Uh, quickly, uh, as a VA, how do you compete on an international basis because of uh, your competitive prices? Uh, I run on the theory that um, there's enough for everyone, so I don't even try. <laughs> um, and that's a lot of thing. A lot of that I, we find is uh, the people I work with. They want someone based in Australia. And they understand that the, the cost of living and all that and the, everything on that side of things doesn't compete anywhere near what the overseas VAs have. So, um, yeah, and there are instances where, yes, you could go overseas, but the, the, the culture barriers, the language barriers, the quality of work, um, yeah, it all, it, it all differs so much. So I run on the theory that you, you get what you pay for. And... Yeah, if you want someone that you can wholly trust and be in the, you know, in the same time zone and understand the business environment, then that's what Australian-based based VAs are for. Yep. Excellent. Well, that's uh, that's a wrap for this afternoon. So awesome. let's give Tony a big round, round of sorry, Corin a big round of applause.